Good morning, everybody. Boy, it's been a long time since I've done a video, and probably that's because it's summertime. I hope uh, your summer is, is working out well for you. I'm just sitting here in a beautiful Pacific Northwest West, uh, British Columbia morning, and uh, it's, it's beautiful. Um, it has been the last few days. Today's August 5th, 2019, and um, I'm about to, to head out and start doing some of my errands and enjoying the day, but I'm inspired today uh, because of the radio show that I just did last Thursday on the topic of nagging. Now, if you're tuning in for the first time, you know, uh, or let me, let me let you know that uh, I've done 30 or close to 40 videos now on my YouTube channel, and, um, and I'm I, uh, a counselor therapist. I've been in the business for over 30 years, and uh, over the last decade, I've been specializing in family counseling, but I've done all sorts of counseling, everything from running award-winning life skills groups and designing curriculum and and um, and vocational counseling and uh, running groups, um, all sorts of personal growth groups in group therapy. And, and in fact, I run right now a Tuesday evening parent leadership group for parents who want to be the best leaders they can possibly be. As far as I can tell, we all want to we all want that. We all want to be the best leaders we can possibly be for our families and for our communities and for the world. And so I get the blessing of working with some wonderful parents Tuesdays in the Newton area of Surrey. It is a drop-in group. So if you're interested in the group or if you're professional in the area um, and you want to know more about it, then you know, I'd be happy to, to give you more information. So anyway, like I said, uh, the last decade as a, as a family counselor, and you can imagine how many parents I run into that their children are accusing them of being naggers, that they they nag a lot. And um, of course, this can also apply to, you know, uh, issues between anybody really, but, you know, spousal issues, marital issues, what have you. You know, we just we just tend to do it. You know, um, it was an interesting conversation on the radio show because I said to the interviewer, I said, uh, do you like nagging? And she says, well, no, I don't. Uh, you know, we, we briefly talked about why people nagged. And I don't want to spend a lot of time with that because at the end of the day, the answer is the same regardless of, of how you come about it. Uh, and that answer, let me give you the quick short of it, is that uh, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it right why well you know when I, the interviewer said you know she she didn't like to nag herself what, what was it what's the experience well it's frustrating right it's exhausting it's depleting and there are reasons why that is but it's not the actual person we're nagging about or to uh, that is the source of that exhaustion and depletion which i'll explain in just a moment um so yeah, people nag, you know, out of frustration, etc. Everybody has their reasons, as I said. But, but I said, you know, okay. So here's the deal: you don't like doing it. And then she went on to say, you know, I don't even get the results that I'm looking for. The more I nag, the more it seems my whatever it is, I can't remember who a spouse or my children, they don't respond to me. Oh, okay, so not only do you not like it, you don't get your results. And then I said, do you like being nagged? No, I can't. I mean, she said, I can remember when, you know, I was a kid being nagged by my own parents and I hated it. And it's like, OK, so. Your nagging depletes you. You don't get results and you hate it when it's done to you. So why do you do it? See, this is the insanity of it. Why do you do it? Now think about it, folks, right? Probably the same thing for you. You don't like doing it. You don't like it done to you. And you don't uh, get the results that you're looking for. So stop it, right? <laughs> so stop it. Well, then, you know, the, 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 the question you might have is, well, John, what am I going to do? Nobody listens or my kids don't listen to me, so I have to nag them. Well, you're right. You're up for a different response. Because if you don't change your ways, 
this is just not going to end end up good in any possible way. You're depleting yourself. You're not getting the results you want, right? You don't even like it done to you. So that's a lot of bad right there. So that's a lot of good reason to not nag. Okay? Give it up. Give it up. I think, you know, I was also trying to explain some of the mechanics of it. It's not just nagging. What is a nag? Nagging is complaining, really. Nagging is a lot of things, but let's say it's complaining. It's, you know, anybody who's been nagged chronically, how do you feel when you're being nagged? It can end up being, you know, we looked it up on the uh, on the computer in front of us when we were doing our radio show. And you know, one of the words that was used was harassment. Do you ever feel harassed, harangued? prodded pushed you know like what's coming at you is it is in no way helpful is it it is irritating it, it's you know borderline it can be malicious especially when somebody's you know kind of heightened quite a bit so these chronic complaints that come out is what we call nagging how do we get there well i worked into to this discussion a quote by einstein See if you can follow me here. It's short, but it's tricky. And it says so much. We, we went over it and over it and over it. It says this. Everything that can be counted does not necessarily count. So did you get that piece? That's super important. Everything that can be counted does not, does not necessarily count. Now, here's the next piece. I hope, write it down so you can remember it, right? Everything that counts cannot necessarily be counted. Let me go that, write it down. Like I said, everything that counts cannot necessarily be counted. How does that relate to complaining or chronic complaining that we might call nagging? I'll tell you how is that when people complain about other people, when people nag other people, what they've actually done is that they've actually, and this was the word that the interviewers or the phrase, taken mental notes. The way I described it, and I see this a lot, like I said, a lot of complaining, a lot of you know, nagging that goes on in family relationships and other relationships. It's that, it's almost like, like she said, it's mental, but mentally, we take notes. We make a list. We follow people around and count. Uh, Billy didn't take out the garbage on Monday, one, and he didn't take the garbage out on Tuesday, and he didn't pick up his socks, three, that's number three, strike three. So, you know, we got three right there. Oh, but wait, I'm not done yet. And so I keep counting, and I keep counting, and I keep counting. And people, people count how often... Their spouse, how often their children, uh, you know, kind of come up short, right? It's kind of like, would you like somebody following you around and monitoring you all the time? Which is another thing that we talked about. When people nag other people, those are also the people who monitor everybody, which is also very exhausting to do. But for the person being monitored, being tracked constantly, and everything's being noted, right? This person is keeping track, you know, counting how many times the person comes up short. Eventually, it starts to create a household or an, a, a full of anxiety because everybody's walking on eggshells. You know, and, and so, yeah, people follow each other around and, and make these lists that, that contain 10, 20, 30, 40, <coughs> 50 different notes <coughs> excuse me about how a person has fallen short can you see how messed up that is why well for a lot of reasons and i can't get to them all today but certainly one of them or maybe two of them you know is that wake up right we all fall short multiple times a day we like to use the old cliche, none of us are perfect. 
But people usually just throw that around and you know when they're trying to cover their own butts. But yes, we all come up short multiple times a day. So somebody keeping a list of all that, I have I, I don't see how that is all at all mature or even a true reflection of who the person really is. I mean, if somebody's following someone around, especially someone in their family or their spouse who they say they love, and yet they're compiling a huge list of where that person has come up short so they can pound them over the head with it, so they can harass them with it, how honorable is that? It's not honorable at all. That's not a true reflection of love or the love that this person would have for anybody. No wonder it's depleting you. No wonder it, it sucks the life out of you. It, if you're if you're nagging, it sucks the life out of you. If you're the recipient of it, if you're being harassed by someone who's doing that, it's sucking the life out of you. It is a life-taking behavior, if you will, or attitude. Following somebody around and counting, making a huge list. And I say oftentimes the reason why people are, are, are exhausted is because it's like they're, they're carrying around a backpack or a file cabinet constantly of, of the notes that they've taken. And Einstein says, guess what? Wake up. Wake up to what? That doesn't count. I know you think it does. See, because the human mind is always on purpose. <clears throat> I mean, why would somebody be following somebody around and compiling like dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of notes about how this person is coming up short unless they thought it had some value, unless they thought it counted? You know, and so someday they're going to they're going to spew out all this stuff and just put it on display and say, well, you know, last week you did this, this, this. And last year you did this, this, this. Last month you did this, this, this. Big deal. <clears throat> Big deal. It doesn't count. That's what Einstein says. It doesn't count. It's not worth crap. Let it go. See, this is the deal. The human mind is always on purpose. And sometimes we get seduced. This is called an indulgence now. We get seduced into things, if you will, like counting, like, like counting up all of somebody's shortcomings. Somehow the human mind is seduced by that. We get to be right about how wrong somebody else is. You know, of course, nagging and, and doing this kind of thing is real, uh, you know, real uh, attractive to somebody who has a trauma history and they feel deeply wrong or deeply ashamed of themselves. And so, you know, often these people are the ones who need to put others down in order to make themselves feel better. They get to be right about how wrong somebody is. You see, nagging is like that. that is, that's exactly what it is. And you might, you might, with your nagging, you might... What they say, win the battle, but you're going to lose the war. And this is how families get torn apart. See, no, it's a life-taking experience, right? Nobody likes doing it, you get, not getting your results. Nobody likes experiencing it. And so some, a parent might say, well, that's the only way I can get my kids to do anything. Well, see, in that moment, you know, the parent may be relieved that all their nagging accomplished a, a, that kind of result, obedience. But they're what they're they're throwing out the baby with the bathwater here because what's going to happen is that they're losing respect. They're losing respect. Nagging does not inspire. Period. It depletes. It does not give life. It's life taking, not life giving. It it. It's not inspiring. It's deflating. And when somebody does something because you keep nagging, all they're doing is tolerating you. Just They do it just to get you off their back. And again, it, it, it's doing nothing for anybody in terms of, for instance, as I mentioned, all parents want to be the best leaders they can possibly be. 
Well, what would that mean? Well, you want your son and daughter to become their own man or their own woman, which is called individuation. Uh, and so ultimately you want your sons and daughters to do what they do, clean up the room, the house, whatever it is, do chores, because they know it's the right thing to do. Because they have some sense of an inner moral code or what I call a code of honor. They have some connection or a good connection to their deeply held virtues. And they realize that it's in their best interest to do what they're to do. And when you rob your son or daughter of that by pounding them down or you rob your spouse of that opportunity by pounding them down and harassing them, the best you're going to get is obedience, but they're going to just be tolerating you. And they can't hardly wait then to get away from you. So again, you win the battle, but you lose the war. You you know, you get your chores done or whatever. You get some obedience out of it, but you're going to ruin the relationship. So, you know, the thing to keep in mind here, and this is what all the wisdom teachings talk about, is that remember that the core of who you are is, is essentially two pieces, truth and love. Always remember that who you are, the depth of your soul, is truth and love. And those two things must be married, if you will. They must be fused together. So when you speak, <clears throat> you speak from a place of love. And nagging isn't loving. It's life taking. See, when a parent or anybody can speak or ask what they want from somebody in a, in a loving way, can speak the truth in love, the person can receive it. And because they can feel the love, they don't mind doing it. This is where Einstein said everything that counts cannot necessarily be counted. And that love piece, we all know this, right? We try to capture it in songs and movies and poems and prose and all sorts of stuff. But it can't be counted. And that's what's important. That's what's important. That list that, that people make of people's shortcomings is in no way honorable. It is a life-taking experience. If you, if you are doing it for your own interest, for your own sake, stop it. And what you may want to do, if you've been doing it for a long time, is to demonstrate personal accountability and personal responsibility. In other words, just kind of say, yeah, I've been doing it. And know that it's probably taken a toll on you and it's taken a toll on your family and, or, or your spouse, your husband, your wife. And go to them and admit that. Say, you know, I was watching this guy, John, his video today, and I realized that I'm a nagger. That I, you know, I I do. I do follow you around and take notes and, you know, and I love you and that's not even close to being loving. I'm so sorry. It takes courage to do that takes courage but that's what counts that's what counts it can't be counted thank God if you will but it's that's what makes the difference that's what can that's what counts so remember again as men and women of integrity as people of integrity who want to be the best leaders that we can possibly be <clears throat> Acknowledge yourself as a truly loving person that you want to speak from truth and love and bring those two pieces together. And when you can't, because we all fall short, you can demonstrate personal accountability and responsibility in order to restore your integrity. So thank you for listening in. Share this video, please, with as many people as you possibly can. And tune in on the radio shows, uh, Bulamaste Radio. It's online. Uh, just Google Bulamaste, uh, B-U-L-A-M-A-S-T-I, radio. And they also stream it live uh, on Facebook. Uh, so uh, Thursdays, 6 o'clock, 
to 8 o'clock. And there's lots of different music being played through the whole thing. And we just have a lot of laughs and a lot of fun because, you know, as you can imagine, this topic of nagging, it just – we all do it and we've been recipients of it. And it's just – got to learn to laugh at ourselves, which is a whole other discussion. <laughs> all right. Well, you enjoy this wonderful day. Thank you for tuning in. And if you have any questions, uh, shoot me a message, leave a comment. Um, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. And um, I'll just uh, you know, keep posting. Take care. Bye.